Hi guys, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for people who love design, art and all things creative. I'm Jacqueline and I'm an interior architect and designer here at DNB. In today's video, I want to share with you how to choose which computer to buy for architecture or interior design. Maybe you're an architect or interior designer looking to level up the current computer you have. Or maybe you're a student who is about to start your studies, in which case you're probably buying your first computer or laptop specifically for design. I know that when I was a student going into university, I thought that the laptop I had was good enough and bless it, I worked that thing to the core. But looking back, that one was not suitable for rendering and a whole bunch of other stuff. And because of that, in this video, I'll be walking you through some things I wish I knew back then and also giving you guys like a checklist of specifications to look out for so that you can buy the best computer for you. So if you're interested, let's jump in. Now, just to give you guys some context, I have the Lenovo ThinkPad P51 laptop, which I've had since mid 2018. Of course, as time goes on, the laptop has become a little bit slower than it was when I first got it, but it works really well and is perfect for me. I personally chose this laptop because my other one could just not handle doing rendering work, so I was looking for specifically for one that was really good at producing rendered visualisations quickly. Although, you know, it's worth saying that years ago when I started my university degree, I had no idea how much I'd be rendering in interior architecture, which maybe was a bit dumb of me, but honestly, I had no freaking clue what rendering even meant. But after learning about it and doing it, I knew that it was time to level up from my Asus laptop. The keyboard on the ThinkPad is also very ergonomic and I feel like it's perfectly designed apart from the control and FN keys, but I've actually switched those via the settings anyway. The Lenovo ThinkPad series, in case you're not aware, is kind of a staple in the design world and you'll find a lot of architects and interior designers using them. In fact, you'll almost always see it rank when you type in best computers for architects and interior designers. But I think that's because it's a really good all-rounder. Of course, it's not the only brand and I'll talk about brands a bit later on. And whilst it's got great specifications, I didn't really think about when getting it that all these specifications have to be housed somewhere, right? And compared to other laptops, it is quite heavy to carry around especially if you have to carry it from client meetings across London, or even if you're a student and bringing it to and from class every day, you will absolutely have an imprint in your shoulder by the end of the day. So the actual weight of your computer might be something you want to consider. It's not really something I considered at the time and it is a negative, but that doesn't mean that I would choose a Chromebook or MacBook Air over it, because really that's like comparing Hulk to Spider-Man. No offense. Now that I'm working from our studio and not traveling so much, it makes sense for me to have a monitor and PC combo rather than a laptop. So, you know, I've been eyeing out a few. And to be honest with you, I just like Lenovo. I'm so used to it now. So I probably would buy something from Lenovo in the future. But if you're moving around a lot, then of course the best option for you would be a laptop. Of course, there are other options like tablets or interchangeable devices like the Microsoft Surface Book. But if I'm being completely honest, you will be doing most of your designing on a computer. To this day, common design software is more user-friendly on computers as opposed to iPads anyway. I have an iPad and I of course have experimented with lots of different design apps on there to produce work, but really nowadays I only use it for research and communication. I find that if you're trying to do 3D work, it can just be pernickety to achieve that on a tablet and it will take 10 times as long. By all means try, but I just can't see why anyone would prefer it to a computer. Now let's move on to hardware spec and four things that are absolutely crucial when choosing a laptop if you're an interior design or architecture student, or if you're a professional. First off is the computer's processor, which is arguably one of the most important aspects you'll be looking out for. Otherwise known as CPU, the processor is kind of like the heart of your laptop and it determines how fast your computer can complete tasks. By getting a more powerful processor, you're going to help your laptop think and work faster. My laptop at the moment has the Intel i7 core processor, which I believe is one of the fastest ones you can get at the moment. But each computer brand uses different ones and I think Apple now use the M1 processor, which is their best one. 
and usually the more willing you are to spend on one, the better they're going to be, unfortunately. Next up is RAM or random access memory, which is essentially short term memory where data is stored as the processor needs it. I kind of like to think of it as the brains of the computer. RAM allows your computer to perform everyday tasks such as loading apps, browsing the internet, experiencing the latest games. Memory also allows you to switch quickly amongst these tasks and it will remember where you are in one task when you switch to another one. My laptop has 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is pretty normal and honestly the right amount. 32 gigabytes is just too much and one is expensive and two, if you're a student, the likelihood is that you're not even going to use that much anyway, so don't really worry about that. However, I would say that 8GB of RAM is not enough and you will really struggle on rendering programs, playing games and even using Adobe Creative Cloud. So rule of thumb, 16GB. There is also a computer's graphics card to think about, which is also referred to as GPU. A graphics card is essentially an expansion card for your PC that is responsible for rendering images to the display. GPUs are used for gaming, ray tracing, graphics production, rendering, and even mining cryptocurrency. So as designers, it's pretty crucial that we have one and also a good one. All computers have one built in already. For example, I have the Intel HD Graphics 360, but the one that's the really good one and the one I've had added is the Nvidia Quadro M1200, which also has four gigabytes video memory. Again, just like the processor, the more you're willing to spend on one, the better it will be for your use. For example, a good graphics card could take about five minutes to render an image, a less advanced one could take an hour plus to render a still image, and one that doesn't even have a graphics card or a really, really crap one might not even render at all, and you might just find that your program just keeps on crashing. In case you're wondering what the best GPUs are, I've included a list in the description of lots of interesting links that I think will be really helpful for you guys. I don't think I can just shout out one specific brand or version because all the hardware specs are going to be individual to you in terms of what you need and also of course your price range. And of course there is also storage space known as SSD or HDD. A hard drive is a hardware component that stores all of your digital content, for example your music, your images, your documents, your operating system, absolutely all of your digital content is stored onto a hard drive. The two different types to choose from are HDD, hard disk drive, and SSD, solid state drive. I would say that the preferred one is SSD because it really makes the laptop quick to use. SSDs use less power and therefore have a longer battery life because the data access is much faster. Whilst HDDs have spinning disks and require more power when they start up. I have a hard disk drive and I can absolutely agree with that. My laptop takes so much longer to start up compared to Laszlo's MSI laptop that's really quick because of the SSD. But of course you do pay more for an SSD and also the amount of storage space you want. I have one terabyte on my HDD, which would have cost three times that amount if I had got an SSD. So that's just some food for thought. Let's also talk about the big question, Apple or Microsoft? Well, there are lots of different factors to think about when it comes to answering the great debate. A lot of design software is actually produced using a Windows operating system, which is why sometimes Mac users can struggle with certain programs on their computer, but of course it just depends on which program you're using. In terms of screen quality, I would say Apple win that round hands down. In my opinion, Macs have much brighter and appealing monitors compared to Windows laptops. However, one thing to bear in mind is USB ports that you'll be using. If you have a graphics tablet, a wireless mouse, a wireless keyboard, a lot of the times you are going to need a USB-A port, which Apple stupidly decided to get rid of and they only have USB-C ports instead now. And if you have to share memory sticks or plug your computer in to do a presentation, you will need a USB adapter and all of that stuff can just be so 
hassly and annoying. I would say though, if you have an iPhone, an iPad, and you're used to using all that kind of stuff and you like it, then a Mac could be a good option because everything is interlinked with one another. Where I think Apple really fails, unfortunately, is when it comes to rendering power. Windows devices win hands down every time. I would say that the only Mac that's actually good for rendering are the big iMacs. And there's a reason that when you look up best laptops for architects and interior designers, the MacBooks are hardly ever there. That's just something to think about, guys. I think that mainly because their appeal is in the appearance of them and the mobility, and not so much in the hardware components. They use the lightest, smallest, most energy efficient parts, which obviously fails when you're trying to do a beast of a task like rendering 3D buildings. When choosing a computer, I think a big part of it is the look of them. We can't deny that we all want something that looks good, right? Back in the day when I was researching what laptop to buy, I have to admit I wanted a MacBook because they were the sleekest ones around and to be honest, they probably still are the sleekest ones around. But when I found out that the MacBooks are actually pretty useless other than the aesthetic side, I then obviously changed my mind. Also, MacBooks were and still are the most popular choice around. Everyone I knew had one. But I have to admit, when it came to the actual designing side and not just the researching side, their laptops would crash left, right and centre. And I'm not going to lie and tell you that the Lenovo ThinkPad is the sexiest laptop because, let's face it, it is a chunky brick. But it works really well and that's what really matters. Always remember that the inside of your computer is what you should be thinking about. Another growing trend within the architecture and design professions is the adoption of using gaming laptops because of their really powerful specifications which are built to handle incredibly detailed graphics and demanding streaming requirements. The processing power of gaming laptops make them ideal for BIM and architectural visualisation tasks and often cost less than top of the range mobile workstations. I also looked at gaming laptops and they just weren't my thing in terms of the look, especially with these light up keyboards. Hmm. But if you're a gamer or you like the look of them, then I would absolutely say that's a route you could go down. And just in general, some computer brands to look out for for architecture and interior design are ones like MSI, Razer, Alienware, and Lenovo's Legion line. Those are all gaming brands. Also, Lenovo just in general. Like I said, Apple iMacs, Dell Inspiron, Dell XPS, Microsoft Surface Book, and the HP ZBook. But of course there are just so many out there and in the description below I've linked down some links that I think will be really useful for you guys. I hope that you learned something in this video and I'd love to know which computer you have your eye on. If you're new to the channel then I just want to say welcome. On this channel we talk about interior design, architecture, illustration, content creation, graphic design and all that cool creative stuff in between. So if any of that interests you make sure to subscribe to see videos just like this one. Leave me a desktop emoji down below to let me know that you guys enjoyed this video or learned something new and if you liked it then please give it a big thumbs up because by doing that you actually really help our channel to grow and reach even more people. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!